How's it going guys? Welcome to another video. It has been a while, hasn't it? I've been quite busy in the past few months, so you might have not seen or heard from me for a while, but I've been trying to post some, you know, street photography related videos in the recent months, so hopefully those have been enjoyable as well. But as I was editing those photos and thinking about street photography a little bit, this kind of video idea came to mind because I'm sure a lot of you guys relate. A lot of you guys have thought of this before, especially if you've done street photography before. And that's on the idea of is street photography creepy or weird or why does it make me feel like I'm doing something wrong when I do street photography? because I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. This is something I thought about, especially when I was a beginner, when I was starting out more so than I do now, because I think now I've gotten a bit more comfortable and familiar with what I'm trying to do and just being on the street in general. But I know for a lot of you who might just be starting out, this might be kind of weird to just be going around taking pictures of people or things in public. So I wanna to touch on those ideas as well and kind of share what I've learned in the past few years of street photography as well. And then maybe you guys can share as well your comments or other things because I know a lot of you guys are more experienced than I am, at least in this realm. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start with the general overview. What is street photography? Why do we do it, et cetera, et cetera. Street photography, just a low rundown. It's just a form of candid photography that you'll see often on public places or public areas. So pretty much it's just any type of photography done in a public area. And most street photography tends to be of people or buildings or landscapes or whatnot. And we do it because maybe we've seen some pretty impressive street photos in the past. Masters such as, you know, Bruce Gilden, Joel Meyerowitz, or Cartier Brisson have taken a lot of photos that have kind of shaped what has become street photography today and have inspired a lot of people to take up street photography themselves. Now, everyone has their own kind of impression on street photography. Everyone prefers to do a different style, their own kind of style. So just because you see other people doing some type of street photography doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. There are many forms and shapes of street photography is basically what I'm getting at. It all depends on your personal taste, your personal preference, and what you're trying to express. Also, if you're just starting out, you don't need to worry about all this nitty gritty stuff. You just need to take pictures and try and figure out what you like and what you don't like. So that's the general synopsis of street photography. Obviously, it gets more complicated than that, but for just this video, that's all we really need. All right, let's move on to the next topic, and that is asking. One, asking for permission before taking a portrait can often kind of smooth things over. It makes things a little less awkward, especially if you made eye contact with a person and they already noticed you taking a picture of them in the first place. You can go up to them and you can ask, hey, can I take a picture of you? I thought, you know, this whole thing is interesting. Maybe I thought your outfit was nice or whatnot, but oftentimes it's impractical because you can't ask every person for permission before you take a picture of them. There's just too many people, and especially if you're taking pictures on the street, you're going by so many different people, so many things are happening at once, and if you try and ask for permission every time, you're gonna miss so many other moments and just, it's gonna be more of a hassle in my opinion. Now, for street portraits, which is what I believe people are getting at when they go with this method, it can be a very effective method because then you are smoothing things over, you're not running into a rough bump when someone notices you're taking a picture of them and they get offended or something like that. And you'll end up with a lot of good portraits because you'll get permission from a lot of different people. But I think people act very differently when they know a picture is being taken of them. So if you ask for a portrait of someone, they'll start to pose or act differently in front of the camera than as opposed to if they didn't notice you were even there. My type of street photography, I like to capture candid moments, especially. So I like to capture people naturally when they're doing their own thing, when they're minding their own business, when they're in their own thoughts. And I think that shapes the photo really well in itself. So I would recommend asking for permission only when necessary because I don't think you need to go around asking everyone for permission before you take a photo. Then it's kind of like, you know, one, it's a hassle, two, you're ruining the moment, three, it's just overall pretty impractical. But just be prepared to ask for permission or like have a fail safe if you make that awkward eye contact with someone. If you do see someone and you wanna take a street photo of them, of course it's okay to ask for permission and if they don't wanna give it, then they don't wanna give it. But I think it's just one of those things where you, you want to know the right time to use it. Next point I wanna talk about is that street photography has gotten a pretty bad rep, in my opinion, from paparazzi and paparazzi of old. So back in the time period when paparazzis were getting a lot of attention and celebrities and stuff, exposing celebrities, that type of photography was like a big thing. I think people started associating anyone with a camera with being paparazzi. And 
that is not to be confused. People who take pictures intentionally to expose other people or to use them as leverage to gain for things like that, monetary reasons and whatnot, are, in my opinion, are not photographers. Those are just something else entirely. So I don't consider paparazzi as photographers or anyone with that kind of malicious intent. If you're the type of person to get into street photography, then honestly, you're taking pictures for a lot of different reasons. You're never really going out onto the street taking pictures of random people to expose them or anything. Mainly you are kind of creating snapshots or glances of moments in time that happen to appeal to you, inspire you, or just, you know, just look overall aesthetic in a certain way. So, but obviously most of the public would not know this. So a lot of people generally associate anyone with a camera as being paparazzi and then that if they're taking a picture of them that they're trying to post it online or upload it online and expose them in some way or just you know that kind of intent and so i think that's just something that if you're into street photography or you're getting into street photography that's just something we have to deal with as a result of those things happening in the world but if you just understand that you and stuff like that, you guys are different, then I think that will put your mind at ease at least a little bit. Just understand that that is a risk you have to be willing to take. If you are on the streets, people might think that you are trying to expose them. And you might get 0.01% of people who don't want their picture being taken and notice you taking a picture of them who come up to you and ask you to delete those pictures and whatnot. Just comply, it's not worth the picture and it's really easy to just delete the picture. Sometimes the picture wasn't even good anyway. So but yeah, I don't think any one picture is worth making someone uncomfortable like that. So that's just my take on it. Let's move on. Something I want to bring up about street photography is that obviously there's a reason why we do it. So there's a positive upside to street photography. And we've been talking a lot about the negatives and just how street photography is perceived in the public eyes, but it's not all bad. And if you think about a lot of the positive sides I think you can break the whole spiral or the negative feedback loop of looking at street photography in a weird way am I being weird am I being creepy going out on the street taking pictures of random people what are people gonna think of me if they notice me taking a picture and I don't want to interact with that awkward interaction it just all feeds on itself but street photography isn't a bad thing inherently and here are some reasons why street photography can be a positive or a good thing. One, street photography can be used to spread a lot of knowledge. So say maybe you are on the streets and you just happen to be there at the time of an important event or a big marathon is happening in your city or something like that. You can go around taking street photos of people reacting to the runners, the runners themselves, and just capture the vibe and the energy of the moment and that can actually be used to share the event with other people people might come across your photos and see those photos themselves and be like oh is that what that was kind of like i didn't think it was that kind of event or moment or anything like that and so street photography in general can be used as a way to spread knowledge of certain things that are happening across the world that people have no idea about, but because you were there and you took a photo, they somehow found out about it. Street photography similarly can also adhere to a cause. So maybe you are at a more major, more time moment event, like a riot or a, you know, a protest or something like that. And taking street photos from that event that is probably never going to happen in that same time, place ever again can be really, really important for documenting certain stuff. And I think it's important for street photographers to realize their importance when they're taking pictures of things like that because no one else is gonna take the photos the way you do and your being there creates kind of a timeless memory for other people to look at, especially if you create good work. So your street photos can very well adhere to a cause and really show kind of important moments in history as well just by you being there. And that kind of moves me on to the next kind of positive point and that is just general documentation. A lot of things I do with street photography just tends to be simple moments in everyday life. I like the simple stuff. I don't like obviously important events and stuff can be exciting to document and take pictures of, of course, as well. But a lot of simple life I like to document because I think that is where we spend most of our times anyways. And just appreciating and enjoying the simple life is something I really like to implement in my own street photography. And so taking this into consideration, street photography can be a really positive thing. So a lot of your street photos from a certain time, maybe, I don't know, half a decade, or maybe the year you took a lot of street photos in, people are going to look back at those photos and remember a lot of things about that time period that they would not have otherwise. Even looking back just 10 or 20 years 
I remember a lot of things that were different about the times those photos were taken in, not only for the photographer myself, what I was going through, what I was doing as a photographer or whatnot back then, or if I wasn't even into photography back then, I just remember a lot of other things such as the way people dressed, the way buildings were structured, the different cars people drove. Things were also very different just by time and place. And a lot of your photos might be remembered for just being that photo that really captured 2022 really well. Oh, that's how people lived back then. And I think that's a really important thing that shouldn't be neglected because things changed so quickly. So you might think your street photos are unimportant. You might think your street photos have no relevance, but in 50 years, 100 years, your photos might end up really capturing the essence of what life was at that time and place. So yeah, I hope that made that point kind of clear. So ultimate takeaway, the last point I want to make is that yes, street photography can be creepy, but that's just about with anything in this world and any genre or kind of hobby or profession, anything can be creepy if you're being creepy about it. Street photography itself is not inherently creepy. Just don't be a creep, you know? So don't use your photos for bad purposes or weird purposes, or don't be weird about it when you're taking pictures. Don't take pictures of people in private settings. Don't go up to people and intrude on their privacy unless that's your style which i guess you have to be okay with the ramifications of that you'll have to decide for yourself where you want to draw the line and all that stuff but yeah i guess that's pretty much the only way i can end this video anyways hopefully this video helped some of you guys get some insight onto it if you are starting out or you're new to street photography if you have your own opinions on street photography and what it means to you and how you like to go about it and how you've had like certain altercations in the past maybe with other people who have been mad please share them down below i think a lot of other people will find them helpful or at least insightful in their own journey so to speak so yeah Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. This whole summer is going to be kind of busy for me, so we'll try and put out as many videos as we can. But otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching. Happy shooting. See you guys later. Peace.